True story, actually, my mother told me when I was a year old that I, I drank a, 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 a cup of kerosene. Yeah, when I, yeah it's, it's been a long time. See, if they don't have this, I'd be dead by now, many times over. That's why I keep saying that guy is not as powerful as he lets you on to believe. He's got some power. I give him credit for that, but he ain't as powerful as that. In 2006, I, I was preaching in Reading, and I was ministering, and it just the place just turned upside down, and it, you know one of those impromptu deliverance sessions where everybody who is not being delivered becomes a deliverance minister. <laughs> you ain't seen none of that before, where the place just erupts to the place to the point where there are not enough workers to help. So if you are not being delivered, you are by default a deliverer. Amen. <laughs> You know, and so everybody was just flowing everywhere and catching everybody and blah, blah, blah. And this girl began to speak in tree, actually, in the Ghanaian language. And a friend of mine had to interpret what she was saying to me. And she said, you know what? Uh, we knew someday you would come and do this to us. That's why we tried to kill you your whole life. And the demon read back to me every single time since when I was five months old and got what we now know was bronchitis, you know. Anybody could tap that. <laughs> you know, I, I actually did get bronchitis. So, so. If you don't get the joke, get, go on YouTube Sweet Brown. When you get home, YouTube Sweet Brown and come back next week and laugh with us. And from five months old with bronchitis down to that same year of the car accident, the demon recalled back to me every single time so you're going to try to take me out over my entire life. And with things that some of you would not understand are necessarily death related, such as being depressed as a teenager. Hello. Mm -hmm. There's no such, there's nothing clinical about depression. It's a spirit. Don't tolerate it. And that's why I don't like depressants around me. You know, you know, if you come around me with, you know, you know, some people just sit down and, and because they're in a bad mood, they just want you to be, I'm not talking about someone who is really dealing with something that if, you know, there's a mourning process for dealing with something. Does that make sense? There's, so, I'm, I'm, I'm some, you know, I mean, if you came back from a shopping mall and someone scratched your car, I didn't expect you to be jumping up and down, you know. There's a period to mourn, amen. You say, say hey, my car. You know, or they say in my mother's language, motto me. <laughs> you know, but when you see people who are constantly, it's almost like a cycle. Every so often, they carry their own atmosphere around with them. I don't, I don't like, I don't like being around that because, oh, let me caveat that. Let me caveat that. Caveat that. Take the high middle down a little bit, or my low middle up. Sorry, to, to balance it. I don't mind people with issues who understand they have issues and want to solve the issue. I, I, have, I have all day. What I have no time for is people who want to... People, sometimes problems can become almost addictive. It, where you, your, your identity becomes your issue. So the guys, so next week, Friday and Sunday, my brother, Dr. Larry Dunn, is actually in the country right now is going to be here in Nottingham and we'll, talk, we'll get to that in a second because I'm very excited about next week. I'm extremely excited about next week. It's been a long, long time since I've been as excited about something as next week. We were ministering together in Leeds in 2006, seven, and there was a woman in the room who I knew personally. God gave him a word and said, somebody here God wants to heal from, from the use of glasses and he pointed at her. Now, somebody else in the room said, no, <laughs> you're not going to leave me behind. So another woman with glasses in the room said, nah, 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 that word is for two of us. So she ran out. Now, the woman who tagged on to the word got healed. Till today, I know her. Till today, she doesn't wear glasses. The one who the word was for didn't get healed. And of course, as people normally do, well, there's dodgy pastors, you know, false prophets. And as my brother was walking away, he just stopped. You know, you guys have seen him before. When he gets angry, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a nice version. He just stopped and turned around. Said, 
tell everybody what you just said in your mind. He called her forward, put the mic in her mouth, say, what did you just think? She's like, um, 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 you know, I was just thinking that, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, ish, you know. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, I was just thinking that, you know, um, you know, I'm kind of used to my glasses and I like the way I look in them. Mm, and here you are. Father Lord, Jesus, this is a waste of time. People like their issues. You like your mess. You enjoy. You know, there were times in my life where I used to want to go home. I used to want to go home after a bad day at work so I could cry about my day. Have any of you been there before? Where you just want to get home till you're quiet, where you can actually feel sorry for yourself because it's therapeutic. But the devil is a liar. How did I get to this story in the first place? <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, how did I get to that in the first place? Before that, okay, I'll see. Yeah, so, so basically, thing began to recount to me every single attempt in my life that Satan had ever made. And then it said to me, because we knew that if you ever understood who you were, you would be in trouble. And so I looked at it and I said, well, now I understand who I am. Get out! <laughs> ah! Amen. The moral of the story is this. If you ever understood who you were in God. And the first step to understanding who you are. And I'm going to preach about faith this morning. But like you've never heard it before. I doubt, unless you were here on Friday. I, I very much doubt if you've ever heard pray, preach like this before because it's not out there. Yeah, it's not. I'm, you know, it's just being honest. Not, I'm not being arrogant. It's just honest. Nobody's talking about what we should be talking about anymore. Everybody wants a breakthrough and a house and a car and a husband or two or three. <laughs> and a wife or four or five. You know, one's not enough these days anymore, you know. Everybody wants, you know, some in reserve, you know. Uh-huh. You have preachers fighting over girlfriends. Married preachers. I'm telling you, it's happened to the body of Christ, man. Married preachers are squabbling over a concubine. Reporting each other about how the other one stole their girlfriend. Each of them married. Someone say mercy. mercy. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. What please there means, it is impossible to be in position for God to relate with you. And faith is substance of what you are hoping for and evidence of what you cannot see. Let me start my message from there this morning. Open your Bible with me. Let me take you through a few scriptures this morning. I want to teach you this morning. Amen. Is that okay? Okay, let, let's, let's, let me take my time this morning. Pastor, like I said, when, when the Spirit of God just hits you, just, just, just do as God, as God, amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I want you to turn your Bible with me to Hebrews 11 verse 1. If you could have that on the screen this morning, that would be wonderful. If you could stand with me, that would be great. If you have a Bible, even better. Just lift it up this morning. If you don't have one, get one, Amen. Amen. Like I said last week, if you don't have a Bible, get out your Koran. If you don't have a Koran, get out your newspaper. If you don't have a newspaper, get out your lottery numbers. But by all means, have something that is written. And that, by the way, is what I call a joke. Amen. Amen. But please have something written. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Can we read together, please? Someone say, now. now. Say, now. now. Faith is... The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Keep going. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, by, okay, pause. By faith. 
Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, and by it, by it he being dead, yet speak it. Okay? Matthew chapter 13 this morning. Matthew chapter 13 from verse verse 31. Matthew 13, verse, verse 31. Matthew 13, verse 31. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Keep going. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree. Jesus is Lord. So that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. One more scripture. We'll read this together. Matthew 17. Matthew 17 verse 20. Matthew 17 verse 20. I want, to, I want us to read this together. One, two, go. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Look at your neighbor. Say the word of God is the basis of my reality. Today I will hear his word. It will build me up and give me my inheritance among the saints. My life will never be the same again. Amen. Sit down. Sit down. Let's do this in 20 minutes. So I'll say 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Hmm. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. How we'll do it. We'll, we're going to take some, some time, lay some things, and then we'll shout. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. When it's time to shout, will you shout? Yeah. Okay. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. So I'll say faith is substance. But the first thing I want to point to you is the Bible says now. Not tomorrow, not the day after, not next week, not next year, but what? Now. Somebody say with me, faith is always in the now. now. Say faith Faith is always always in in the the now. And herein lies the principal problem with most of our faith. It is always Futuristic. Is God going to come through? God will do it. I will prosper. Someday, someday, over the rainbow. That's the problem with most Christian faith. But when I say faith, I wish I really wish I could redefine what faith was at the beginning, but it'll mess the flow up. So we'll get to what faith really is. Because when I say faith, many of you have been so raped in your thinking that all you think faith is is the ability to get stuff. True. True. Faith is the stuff. Faith is how I bend God's arm to give me what He didn't want to. Hmm. Now, faith is. Faith is always in the now. It's always about today. It's never about tomorrow. It's never about a time that will come when I... No, no, no. Faith is always in the present tense. Are you with me, somebody? Now, faith is. It is substance. The word substance comes from two words. Sup and stance. Right? Okay. What is a substance? Something you can stand on. Hello. Talk to me, somebody. Faith is, a substance is a tangible thing. You can hold it, touch it, feel it, bounce on it. Talk to me someone. It's not pie in the sky. No, 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 no. It's not spurious. It's not spooky. It's not spiritual partner. Substance, it is real. Faith is real. Somebody say real. Faith is real. It's not, it's not emotional. It's not wishy-washy. It's not, you're trying, if you're trying to have faith, you don't. The Bible says in the book of Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing 
not, 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 it doesn't say and hearing the word of God. No, that's where we mean. Faith doesn't come by hearing the word of God. No, because otherwise many of us would have faith. Because we've heard the word of God so many times. Well, we've heard what they told us was the word of God. Let me, let me rephrase that. Faith comes, the word hearing in Greek means reception. Faith comes when I receive. Not when I receive the word of God. It comes when I receive. Do you understand that? That's what the Bible says. Whatsoever things you want when you pray, believe that you receive them and then you will have them. Faith comes when you receive. Simple. So, if I, I need 200 pounds for Brazilian blades. Brazilian weave, sorry, weave. I'm learning. I'm learning. Brazilian weave. I'm, I'm learning. Yeah, me, I'm learning. Years into my marriage, I'm still learning. I need 200 pounds for Brazilian weave. So I'm going to go and speak to Pio. And I go to Pastor Lumide. Now, the eye I'm talking about here is, uh, you know, uh -huh, not you. Because I ain't going to give you that. Sorry. See, maybe, um, I, I was kind of hoping that um, uh, uh, you, you've not received. And you ain't going to receive. No, 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 no. The Bible says faith comes by hearing or in quote receiving into your senses and that receiving has to be by the rema of god the word, word there is rema which means the now breathed inspired active living and quick word of god not the one written in the bible that's been dead in the book you haven't read for donkeys no the word of god that has been released at that moment in time for that situation so literally this is what faith is faith is a substance it's a physical tangible thing that appears when you receive something that has been released according to the revealed will of god are you with me that's why the lord's prayer starts by saying fatherhood in heaven hallowed be thy name your kingdom come your will be done. Because there is no place for faith outside the will of God. It is presumption when you believe for something that is contrary to what God wants for you. It is witchcraft when you bypass the will of God. without Even, even if it is God's will without bothering to check and start exercising your own emotional covetousness. There's only one sin in the Bible that's repeated twice, covetousness. In the Ten Commandments, sorry. It's so ugly to God, he says, let me, let me break it down. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's goods. God says, let's just, let's just, you know, let's divide it because one was not enough. One time I've spoken, twice you've heard, we've heard. Power belongs to God. Saul exercised faith without God's word and he cost him a kingdom. Hello. It's called covetousness or presumption. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is a product of a chemical reaction between the revelation of God's will and a receptive state in your mind. But at the time that transaction occurs, it is simply a substance of something you are yet hoping for. As at the time God gives it to you, it's not visible. Come on, talk to me. Hmm. Help me, Jesus. Faith is a product of hope. Does that make are you with me? So there must first be something. You are hoping for that is a revelation of the will of God for faith to begin to take effect. So the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
And now therefore a name is given unto him above every other name that the dimension of the name of Jesus that we need should bow every tongue confess to the glory of the Lord the Father blah 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 but basically the Bible said I want you to look unto Jesus fix your eyes on these things the Bible says whatsoever things are good pure honest a report that is wonderful blah 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 think on these things because God understands the principle of hope whatever fills your heart will produce your faith and faith is not only positive there is a kind of faith we call fear fear is not the opposite of faith fear is just perverted faith fear is faith in fear is the re- see, fa- okay the bible says he that cometh to God says okay, it, without faith it is impossible to please God because he that cometh to him must first believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him if you flip that and you say he that now without fear it is impossible to displease God because he that hath fear must first not believe that God is or believe that he is not and that he is not a rewarder you see the process fear is faith flipped literally saying God is not able to do what he is able to do or says he can do and because I have a hole in my theology where God should be I'm acting out now my fear are you staying with me? I'm going somewhere and that's why God hates fear is he that I'm not afraid no you are my rent's not due so I can't worship no you just told God I'm not you don't exist you just told God you don't exist Amen. You don't exist. You know, I'm 37, ain't married yet. You just told God you don't exist. That's why I can't come to church. You don't exist. Because what you're saying is you are not able. What, what has happened is as you begin to meditate on certain emotions, those emotions become your hope. And they become the foundation upon which your faith or fear begins to grow. So God says faith is the substance. Now, it is a tangible reality. If I said to you, Didier, there's a lion behind you, what would you do? <laughs> Amen. You would run, and I like your honesty. Some of you will say, I'm going to sit down there. No, no, let me tell you what I would do. Now, I, I would get up, walk slowly a few steps away, then turn and look at the lion and command it. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I want to see what I'm commanding. Just in case, I'm just joking, but in case the lion doesn't realize that I'm saved, he, he, he needs to see Christ in my face. Amen? <laughs> but for many of us, we would bind the lion from, from Asda. <laughs> now, you know why? The information, now, that lion could have been behind you for an hour and you were cool. Because sometimes in the realm of the spirit, what you don't know doesn't hurt you. But the minute you are aware of the, of the presence or existence of negativity, there becomes substance in your spirit. It's, it's, isn't it substance? It's not just emotional. So you literally feel, don't you? You feel something inside of you because you have received substance. And then you take faith to the next level. Paul says, faith without works is dead, being alone. You know why? Because faith is not just substance in my heart. Faith is evidence in my actions. You see that? The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Works or your action is the fulfillment of your faith. Are you with me? There is nowhere in scripture where faith is referenced without a demonstration of said faith. The Bible says it is can we go back there please back to verse 1 it is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things not seen faith is my behavior that is proof that something you cannot see is controlling my activities or my lifestyle does that make sense so if I, if I, if I tell Pastor Blessing I just bought you a four bedroom house and you're in Sheffield at the time, or you're in not number time, and I tell you, you know what, I just spoke to the estate agent in Sheffield, and there's a four-bedroom house waiting, amen. Now, what, what, what could he possibly do to show faith, based on what I've just said? Ask 
ask for the keys. Go and lie down at the altar. Amen. <laughs> Empty his wallet as a Thanksgiving offering. Call Yemi and say, hey baby, you know. Right. You know, start dialing for removal van. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. All these are acts of faith. You know why? Because you are demonstrating the evidence of something that is not seen. Did you get what I'm trying to say? Now, it, it, you cannot claim to have faith if there is no evidence of what it is that you say you have faith about. See, like I said, if you have it, you do. See, there's no such thing as, oh, I'm working up the faith. No, 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 no. There is, see, there are levels of faith, but there are all levels of faith. You don't, there's nothing as half faith. You have faith, then the faith can grow, but it must start as faith. Faith comes. Someone say it comes. Faith comes. It comes. It comes. It comes. Someone say faith come, come, come. It's it's see it's it's an it's an it's a tangible currency. It's a personality. Talk to me, somebody. Faith is a being, and it is attracted to people whose ambience is in line with the word of God. Verse 2. For by it, the elders obtain the good report. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand. Now, the word worlds there in Greek is alon. It means time spans. Are you with me? So I'll say time spans. Time spans. The alons were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear let me explain what that means to you now at the contextual level what God is saying is every physical thing in the universe was created from an intangible reality God is this oh Jesus Jesus talks to his disciples and he says now we translate it and says have faith in God if you say to the beloved, but no, no, the real translation is have the faith of God. Now, let's look at the faith of God in Genesis chapter 1. God shows up on the scene and there is chaos and everything's just jacked up and tore up from the flow up, broke, busted and disgusted. Satan's fallen from heaven and wrecked the planet Earth. It's just upside down, inside out, left side, right, you know. Everything looks like a bad toenail. You know what I mean? <laughs> And, and, and God shows up. And like many of us, he sits down. Oh, Lord, my earth. My. He's, he's the Lord himself, you know. Imagine God saying, oh, God. Was that what the Bible says? God's like, yeah. Ah, see what Satan has done. But, was that what the Bible says? No. God just pops his collar. Brushes the dirt off his shoulder. You know, blows some air into his hand. You know. You know, flattens his, you know. If he, had a, if he had a perm, I don't have one, but, you know. And he says, let everything be recreated. Let everything be fine. What does God say? Let there be what? What is God? God, by his speaking, pulls out a substance that already exists in himself. God takes out a component of who he is. Let there be light. The Bible says, and there was light. It was not until day four that he created the sun and the moon. Wow. Read your Bible. So he was not talking about illumination per se. God said, see, see even, even the scientists will tell us because they just don't want to believe that God exists. So they tell us it was evolution. But they don't tell us, or they would if we asked them, because they have no choice, that the order of creation in Genesis 1 is the exact same order of evolution by scientific understanding. It's the same process. The difference is we believe it happened in seven days. They believe it happened in seven billions of years. Because they don't want to understand that a being could have done it. They tell us the world started by a big bang. Now imagine Jehovah speaking in space. What would it have sounded like? If you put an ant near my mouth and I say, hello, what's it going to sound like to the ant? A bang. 
Come on, talk to me somebody. And they will also tell us that a big component of evolution is light. True, go read this money. You don't even read these things. You don't research them, but you, you, you agree with them. That's why they tell you you came from a monkey and you start acting like a monkey. God says, we need some light in here. And he pulls out from a, himself an already existing substance. And the Bible says, and there was light. Then he says, now that I, that, that was his turn. Then he now says, everything else do after me. Water, pull out land that is already underneath you. Separate. Night, pull out the day that is inside you. Separate. Water, bring out the fish inside you. Come out. Ground, bring out animal bodies from you. Come out. Then God says, I started, I will finish. Let us pull out man from inside us. Are you hear me? Faith, substance, but evidence. The evidence that there was substance was that he didn't flint when he saw a problem. The worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are made by things which don't appear. Everything you see, this thing came from inside me. I'm telling you, that speaker came from inside me. Came from, no, from inside Olumide, Israel, Isiave. Because when your husband, the accountant, told us we were broke, I said we need new speakers. And so I went to my closet and I closed my eyes and I pictured a sound system that I would not have to keep hearing crackle. Remember Snayton? Remember Snayton? I got sick and tired of that rubbish sound system. I pulled it out from inside me. And I showed up in church one Sunday and I said, there you go. Right, genius? And God says, let's, let's see if Adam has learned. Adam, you sleep. Eve. God says, Adam, look at Eve. And God steps back. <laughs> and God says, let's see. Let's see if this boy learned a lesson. And Adam passes the test. He says, she came from me. Adam says, now I un-. Adam says, mm, no, 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 no. The same principle says that thing came from me. The things that appear came from the things that, because they first existed. The Bible says the invisible things of creation are made clearly seen by the things which appear. That is in an essence, the faith of God in manifestation. Matthew 17. Matthew 17, go there for me quickly. Start from verse 19. Verse 19. Now, this is after the disciples had just embarrassed themselves trying to cast out the demons from a young boy. Don't say embarrassed. Totally embarrassed themselves. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why not? No, they came to him apart. They came to him in, in private. You know, the embarrassment was public. It's amazing what public embarrassment can do in your growth with God. Because when you fail publicly, you then go to God in private and ask him the questions. Come on, some. That's why God usually likes to orchestrate public failures for us. Because if the failure happened in our closet, God knows he... he, he, he. There are times when things fail, but then God backs us up at the end. We always forget, don't we? So every pastor once a while goes through a horrible service... And God says, when last did you pray? Aha. Mm. If you once in a while, God let you fail an exam. So you can remember to study. Because you didn't go to the university just to get a degree. You went to get the knowledge. And if God keeps bailing you out supernaturally, you will end up in a job you have no brain for. And probably kill someone. So God will let you fail one exam so you can go back and study. And when you pass the receipt then you will have both the degree and the knowledge. And God's people said, Then came the disciples to his apart and said, Why could we not cast them out? Keep going. 
And Jesus said, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, someone say faith. faith. Say faith. faith. The same faith now, comment by what? Hearing, hearing by the revealed will of God, amen. Faith that is both substance in your heart and evident in your actions. The faith by which you must please God because the faith demonstrates or is proof that you believe that he is, that he exists, amen. The word is doesn't now see it should have said it, he should I put it this way he that come to God must first believe in verse 6 of Hebrews 11 anyway that God am because what is doesn't mean he exists it refers to the name of God called the I am a he a shah I am my, my, I put it this way he is the ism of isness he's the very definition of existence are you with me God is not something. All things come from God. Does that make sense? So God is the definition of what it is to exist. Everything takes their reference point from him. You get that when you get home. Because of your unbelief, or verily I say unto you, if you have faith, nowhere does it say as small. There is no reference to size in that verse. If you have faith as a grain. Now, English students, literature students, this is what you call a simile, isn't it? Okay. <clears throat> it's not a metaphor, it's a simile. Um, okay, let me take you back to school now. If I say, Pastor Blessing is a tiger, that's a metaphor. It means I am just, I am, I am literally conveying the, 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 the imagery. <clears throat> tiger on the drums, I meant. <laughs> That's a metaphor. If I say Pastor Blessing is as, I was going to say violent, as enthusiastic as a tiger on the drums, that's a simile. I am drawing a comparison because I want to bring it. It means now, what it now means is I am not conferring the fullness of the imagery, but there is a specific element of the comparison I am bringing out for the. Does that make sense? If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Notice it says grain of mustard seed. Because if you, if you, know, mustard, if you know mustard seed, there's not something as a grain of mustard. The seed itself is more than one grain. But let's not go there. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. Keep going. And it shall remove... And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Keep going. How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Next one. Okay. Let's let's leave that for now. Now go to. Just keep that in your brain. Go to chapter 15 of Matthew. Was it 15 or 13 I gave you? 13. Sorry. Matthew 13. Go to Matthew 13. From verse 31. Amen. You've been following. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Matthew 13, 31. Amen. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of is like Jesus is playing word games now. The kingdom of heaven is like to again a simile a grain of mustard seed which a man took notice the man took it come on now the man received it faith cometh by according to what the revealed word of God the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed but the bible says that faith is like as a grain of mustard seed. If A equals B and C equals B, then A must equal. It's standard, isn't it? So the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed. Paul, help me out, please. Which a man took and sowed in his field. Keep going, keep going, quickly, quickly. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree. I remember the war against carnality I preached was this message four or five in the series about the, the two trees. A tree is an establishment, a rooted establishment of a reality 
we have the tree of life the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now the tree of life was an establishment of the essence and nature and thinking and mentality and reality and the flow of god <laughs> the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a tree that encompassed the reality the fullness the essence of what it was to be carnally acquainted with good and evil one reason one symbolized a system of life that flowed naturally from god's will the other one was a carnal thought out processed debated juxtaposition help me between good and evil but it involved the knowledge of both the carnality or the carnal acquaintance the person who is trying to be good but also trying to be evil and god told adam if you eat of the seed of the tree now trees produce three few things they have they have roots meaning they have they have things they come from a certain place are you with me someone that there's something that is feeding them they have a root and the root that the, th the same thing that created or that is feeding them is also the same thing that anchors them they have a stem or a trunk they have a manifestation and it grows wider every year you can tell the age of a tree by its width because every so often the thing expands and expands and it's that trunk that takes the nutrients from the root to the leaves or the branches are you with me then it has branches the bible says when it becomes a tree to the kingdom all the birds of the air come into it the bible says jesus says i am the vine meaning i am the stem you are the branches amen i'm going to feed into you you grow fruit and leaves and produce seed so that you can recreate me in another person's life and then finally they produce seed because the bible says that the life of every living thing is in the seed thereof genesis chapter one and two talks about producing herbs and things with their seed within them are you with me i'm going somewhere jesus says the kingdom of heaven now what is the kingdom of heaven what kingdom means dominion it's the word basilia it means the authority over a domain that belongs to a monarch are you with me no, no, okay let's let's get this off it's about to get interesting here this evening this afternoon i need some space Oof. kingdom a kingdom is a space of jurisdiction that is under the dominion of a king in the hebrew in the greek it's the word basilia the word heaven in greek is uranos it literally means that the, the the jurisdictive atmosphere in the third realm of god or third or the, the third realm of the heavens where god sits and controls and 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 and, and jurisdicts and legislates the what legislate is what i'm looking for now i wish i had time to teach about the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of god but we'll do that at a school of ministry in the summer this year amen we're going deep points club ministry this year we're going to start talking about some mysteries but for, for today let's just put it this way the kingdom of heaven is god see heaven is the headquarters of god's country god's nation our father who art in hallowed be your your kingdom your will be the kingdom of heaven is the current operation of god's government in the earth amen when that government is fully birthed and and, sh and and fully formed, it will give birth to the kingdom of God. But that, we'll talk about that later on. God, Jesus was saying, oh, 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 Jesus was saying here, see, okay, let me let me step back a bit. I got to go back a little bit. You remember that he said when he showed up, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist, his foreigner said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus says, my mission statement is to get you to change what's in between these two ears so that you can receive that thing that is coming. When he was leaving, his disciples asked him, will you at this time restore the kingdom? Because they understood it wasn't about a church or a ministry or happy clappy rituals no 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 
Are you with me? And for the three and a half years Jesus was on the earth, he began, I told you this, I told you you've never heard faith like this before. Jesus began to teach about what the kingdom of God should look like. The Bible says he would teach about things pertaining to the kingdom and he wouldn't just teach, he would demonstrate. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven. A man took it and put it inside bread. It's like a woman who had a coin or 10 coins and lost one and searched the whole house. It's like a man who bought a field and found precious jewels inside and went and sold the field. Amen. And brought, you know, he began to talk about what the kingdom was like. He began to give parables and, and began to explain, but they still didn't get it. So he began to say, okay, you know what? It's not... It is righteousness. Amen. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. And he began to say, okay, let me show you what the kingdom is. When a blind person comes to me and gets healed that's the kingdom in motion it's the kingdom in operation when a person who is barren comes to me that Jesus began to give a picture a salesman's pitch of why the nation of Israel should sub should resubmit themselves back to the government of heaven's kingdom the same thing Adam lost in the garden Jesus said let me come and show you guys what it would be like if we could return to the pre Adamic state. Are you with me? He didn't come to bring a religion. He came to sow the seed. And that's why the Bible says, for instance, when he died and he resurrected, and two disciples, two disciples, come on, two disciples, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. And so they're walking on the road to Emmaus, and he just shows up, stop. And they said, What are you guys talking about? Are you the only stranger in Israel? Haven't you heard about the guy who died? And blah, 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 blah. Oh, tell me about him. And they began to talk. And the Bible says that as he walked, that he began to preach himself from the prophets to the law. From most of Moses, sorry, to the prophets. He began to show them himself in everything. Now, see, what did the law talk about? The law was given a metaphorical picture in earthly symbols of what the fullness of God's kingdom would be like. The problem was the Jews understood it legalistically. They couldn't understand it fully because the expression of the kingdom, Christ, had not yet come. When God told Moses, build a tabernacle, he said, build it according to the heavenly path every ritual every piece of implement come on somebody help me every furniture was talking about a pattern when the prophets began to speak what did the prophets talk about they prophesied about a millennial reign about a messiah that was coming about a day when none would hurt in the holy mountain God Jesus said everything those guys spoke about help me somebody <laughs> everything they spoke about was a picture of me and he began to unpack himself from the bags of everything Moses, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, David. When he said, I saw the Lord, he's sitting at the right hand side of the Lord. And he said, sit till your enemies be made your footstool. That's why he ain't coming back yet. Because you have got to make his enemies his footstool. He's coming back for a glorious, spotless church. Not a bunch of belly waggers and, and come on. And the Bible says, when they got to the place, as he always does, he pretended like he was going to keep moving. Because the time always comes when God is giving a taste of himself. But he says, I'm going to step back. Every parent does this and see if my child wants more of me. We like the initial deposit, don't we? The gold dust. Amen. Like Rebecca, when she was about to be married, was giving gold and jewels. And many brides enjoy the jewels. We want the gifts of the Spirit, but we don't want to move on into intimacy to, be, to conceive and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. No, we don't want that one. And, 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 and Jesus doesn't, pra doesn't practice marital rape. Tell him you have a headache, he tells you I'll see you tomorrow. If I had a hard day at work, see you tomorrow. That's how many Christians are. Lord Jesus, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll be intimate with you tomorrow. I'll conceive your nature tomorrow. I'll conceive your essence. It's always tomorrow. And he keeps coming back tomorrow. The Bible says when they told him, you've got to stay with us. He the Bible says he pretended like he was going to keep going. 
but they restrained him they sat down at the table he took the bread and he broke it and blessed it and their eyes were open and as soon as their eyes were open his work was done I'm going somewhere you can see that I'm going somewhere going somewhere going somewhere the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mustard seed but a man has to take the seed that's what faith is faith is not for your bank account and your car because the Bible says if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness all these other things will be added do you hear me somebody the Bible says if you would just get your mind off you and yours God will take care of you it's like you take that seed and you take it and you sow it in your field What's your field? Your area of jurisdiction. Your career, your job, your family. Whatever you have authority over. You take the seed of the kingdom. Now what's the seed of the kingdom? The kingdom is like a mustard seed. Faith is like a mustard seed. The kingdom is faith. What is faith? What you hear or what you receive, sorry, according to the instruction of God. It is the substance of things hoped for. Now the question is, like I said on Friday, how many Christians have ever sat down to picture what the kingdom of God looks like? How can you hope for something you don't understand? <laughs> Why we keep having cycles of revival? <sighs> because one man spends enough time in prayer to understand what God really wants. That man is so burdened by what he sees. That he spends time in prayer but because he's the only one with that burden when it begins to break through in him and manifest the administrative duties of running ministry catch up with him and when the man stops praying like I joked on Friday the first thing that happens is we design a logo for the revival we copyright the revival we give the revival a name. That's just, that's just, that's just, that's just it. And it peters out. And then 20 years later, another poor man shows up again. And it goes in a cycle because nobody is burdened. Nobody has a picture of what the kingdom of God should be. I've said this as far as churches go. And I say this with no apology. Absolutely no apology. I think this is the best church in the world. The problem is it's a church. And church as we know it is not what God called for. Are you with me? No, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. It's not what God called for. The Bible says the job of the church, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, was to make it clear to the principalities and the powers the manifold wisdom of God. A called out set of people who would sit at the gate of the city and legislate and decree what the heavens should be. And as we bind on earth, the heavens would back up and vice versa. But now we've turned it to a place where we come and, you know, you know, we just have our jig on and, you know, look nice and, you know, happy. Nah, 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 nah. There's no picture. And that's why you're excited and that's why I'm irritated. And we're looking at the same thing. The Bible says, now let's go back to that. That by faith, the world were framed. The ages were framed by faith. Every dispensation is created by the level of faith that the people in that dispensation have been exposed to. And that's why when tongues came back at Azusa Street, they thought heaven had arrived. Because all they had faith for was tongues. But Paul tells us, let's move on to perfection. When Papa Hagen and Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne were walking around in them days, faith healing, and we thought this was as good as it got. We didn't understand a day was going to come when seven-year-olds at the Brownsville Revival in Penascola, Florida in the 80s would lay hands on people in wheelchairs and they would get up. Because faith is progressive or should be. 
but every dispensation of time is framed what frame means is bounded the boundaries of the dispensation are set by the faith that has been received by the hearing and the word of God are you with me Romans 12 says I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice that's why we keep preaching holiness here I've been called all sorts of and I love these names because I've been called the, the sin assassin I've been called the the holiness mafia I just like just, just keep it coming I, I'd gladly I'd rather that than a prosperity preacher by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God for this is all that you are expected from it's just reasonable it's not deep it's not special it's reasonable service but why why do you need to hang on and eschew carnality the bible goes on in verse 2 romans 12 Go, romans 12 quickly please take me to romans 12 i want to show them something quickly 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 romans 12 quickly I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living. Plus, the Paul says, I beseech, I beseech, I'm begging, I'm screaming, I'm crying. I, I would get see, Paul says, I wish I could get you to understand how I feel. The word beseech means I am begging you from the core of my being that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Go on. And do not be conformed to this world. The word world there, I thought for years, was cosmos, which speaks about how the earth is framed and shaped under the control of the enemy. But the word there is not cosmos, it's alone. It means dispensation. Paul's saying, hey, don't get stuck in this dispensation, but be transformed. Someone say transformed. Say transformed. Say transformed. Now, the word transformed in Greek is the word metamorphomai, from which we get the word metamorphosis, which is the same word that is rendered as transfigured in the Mount of Transfiguration. And it is that same Mount of Transfiguration Jesus came down from when he found the disciples could not heal the boy who had a demon, where he then told them. If you have faith like a mustard seed he was telling Peter James and John in essence you know what you saw on that mountain when Jesus was there and Moses and Elijah came and the Bible says he transformed into this being of white light so much that they were scared and could not move and when they had gone Peter said this is so great Jesus let's just build a church here that's what we do every move of God let's call it a name start a denomination get pastors paying tithe and offering amen and then it dies okay I need some help now we're closing we're bringing this bad boy home ah, where's Elijah when you need him Jesus be not conformed to this world I'm hoping somebody else will take the mantle today but be you transformed be metamorphosed be metamorphosed be transfigured from this world into the next are you with me Remember what the Bible says? The invisible things of creation says, oh Lord have mercy. I don't think you understand this. The same way faith is substance. Something has already happened in your inside and you unpackage it and then you act it out by your evidence and what existed inside you now becomes reality outside you. The Bible says don't let your reality be conformed to this world but be metamorphosed, be transformed. That's why you guys think I'm strange. Because I'm living in a different world. You come again now. Everything to spirit. Yes, everything to spirit. Everything is a, your spirit. God's a spirit. Satan's a spirit. What else? You're too spiritual. You will die if you're not spiritual. I remember my family told me a while back. So you read too much meaning to everything. I said, that's why I'm still alive. 
Because everything has a meaning. True? I told the person, I said, have, you've not accused me of reading the wrong meaning. True? Ah, there's a meaning behind everything. Nothing is a, there's no non-living creature. The Bible talks about rocks praising, trees clapping, seas hearing the voice of God, the sun, the moon, and the stars listening. There's no such thing as a non-living thing. Everything has a meaning. There is a parallel universe we live in. And if you don't understand how to function in one of the universes, the second one will kill you. think it's by accident the whole church fell ill in one week where is Elijah when you need him be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the recalibration of your thinking are you with me let God's faith God's picture God's reality let what God expects so take a hold of your inside that it begins to transform you from the inside out till everything else becomes illegal to you. My wife and my mother were just upset with me this week. You say you're sick, you won't lie down. Why should I? You know who I am? Fever will keep me from church over my dead body do you understand that God's kingdom says there is no sickness or no disease and I'm supposed to sit down in bed with my temperature going through the roof while people are at church praising and jumping Say, let them bury me at the church now I'm not saying you have to do that just me amen because the Bible says leaders a higher standard will be expected of you so it's okay for you guys to sleep it off I had no problem with that but I was going to be here and I was here in and I said Satan you don't understand faith is substance I said baby faith is evidence I've got to prove it I've got to walk around the house even with my ankles aching because it's evidence and the more I walked the better I became the more I jumped the but but now I'm going now this is where I'm going now let me finish with this like I said at the vigil yeah, I mean, because they have not received the faith of God not the faith of their bank account because the Bible says true faith is the microcosm of the kingdom of heaven because we have no picture of heaven's kingdom there is no substance in our hearts I heard Samantha talking today when worship was starting that the reason why serving God is a chore is because we don't have a reality in our spirit. It's something we've just been told and taught to do. There's no substance and there's no evidence. That's why there's no prayer. There's no desire to evangelize. There's no desire to live holy. Because it is only for the joy set before you that you can endure the cross. But if there is no hope of glory, Christ in us the Bible says the hope of glory if there is nothing that we are hoping for if we have nothing we are striving for if this for you is it comfortable building nice speakers nice chairs amen but I see a picture I see a nation under God I see a city overrun by the presence of heaven where the red light districts fold where the crack houses shut down where gang members become ushers in church I see a time coming when when I'm walking back when I'm taking my prayer walk around because I, I, once in a while I take an hour long prayer walk around the, around the outskirts of Basford and as I'm walking around people will, will, people will time me see me coming from afar bring out all the sick people like Peter and put them on the floor and they say okay the sun is shining this way today so we have to put them on this side of the road so my shadow can touch him because he said greater works than he did will I do you don't, uh, hey, hey where is Elijah hey. 
Where's the spirit of Elijah, right? Hey! 13 years ago, I started preaching. And this were my first words ever. Something is about to happen. There is a weight of glory in the heavens. I couldn't understand. I didn't know it was faith then. But there was substance in my belly. I just knew. I just had this inner reality of a time coming when the heavens would be so opened that I found draw 228. The last days I poured my spirit upon all flesh and the sons and daughters will prophesy. I said, okay, God, will it happen next week? So I prayed and I fasted and it didn't happen. Maybe next year. I got tired of waiting, so I backslid. Yeah, preachers backslide too, you know. I came back to God. I said, wow, you brought me back just in time. And I began to see... Over the years, I've seen outbursts, Pastor, Pastor Blessing, outbursts, every so often. And the minute we see the outburst, we get so excited that we give it a name. And we dance around it. Oh, I haven't finished my message. I haven't finished my message. I haven't finished my message. Ah, could I forget? Jesus says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be you removed, cast into the sea. What mountain was it? In the wilderness, God speaks to Israel and says, you have camped around this mountain too long. The mountain of unbelief, of fear, of carnality, of sin, of the things that have held you bound too long. It says, turn northward and take your journey. Jesus says, if you have faith, not as small no it's not talking about size because faith is, the size is almost irrelevant it's talking about the content the DNA of the mustard seed if you have the faith of the kingdom of God now when the kingdom of heaven invades your thinking when the hope of God's reality for your future corporately and privately explodes in your soul somebody help me when something shifts on the inside of you the Bible says that thing that has you see that, that, that promise from God Ben let me help you shout I think you can help me let me help you shout see when that vision God has given you for media for kingdom media right Aha. when the stand with me stand with me stand with me when the rema of heaven concerning taking over the media industry when it breaks forth inside you when it explodes like it should. Aha. Tell, aha, aha, aha. Thank you very much. D, D, C. When, when God's promise concerning you in the business area, when it explodes on the inside of you like a mustard seed, the Bible says it inside you will cause you to say to every mountain that has blocked your progress, get out of my way. That's why you still have mountains in your way. What were the mountains the Israelites had? Unbelief, doubt, fear, disunity, inability to let go of the past, cycles. That's why you still have these issues. That's why we still need deliverance services in church. Because there's no seed of the kingdom inside of us. There's no picture inside of us. There's nothing worth fighting for. That's why you can sit down at home and be bitter for a whole year. Because you have nothing you're pressing on to. Because if you are, you look at that person and say, you know what? You're not worth my destiny. You're not worth my future. That's why, that's why because, because somebody doesn't give you a job, you sit down with your rejection letter at home crying. Nobody wants to hire me. But if God shows you that you're not supposed to borrow but learn to nations, you will go get up. Oh, come on, somebody. You go start your own job. You go start your own business and someday you hire the person who fired you and you pay them well to hook to shut up if the kingdoms exploded in your thinking 
young woman such that you see that there's the anointing of a prophet upon you and there is a place in your spirit where God intends you to birth nations you don't cry because that idiot broke up with you no you don't sit down at home and weep till you got Qatar in your hair till you look like three miles of bad road till he sees you and says thank God I left her no 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 you say to the mountain be moved be cast into the sea because you have a picture of heaven coming both to you and through you you have a picture of heaven coming in you as your future and coming through you at the part you have to play to bring the fullness of God into the earth it will keep you from foolishness it will keep you from nonsense it will keep you from sin it will keep you from iniquity you will say I am oh Lord have mercy I'm not going to sin and fall short of God's glory you say young man carry your condoms and both of you go to hell my body is the temple of God because the Redeemer will soon come to his temple come on somebody because that season is coming come on the Bible says the manifestation of the sons of God is what even creation is waiting for the world systems are waiting for you to manifest for heaven in you to break forth there is something that was buried the Bible says you are not born again of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed there's a mustard seed on the inside of you that needs to grow it needs to grow help me somebody it needs to grow it needs to grow it needs to grow branches it needs to produce fruit to the birds of the air from afar come and nestle on it the Bible says in that day the house of the mountain of the Lord will be exalted above all the mountains of the earth and all the nations will, f- will flow into it Titus says he that has this hope purifies himself even as he is pure as God is pure holiness is not difficult when there's a picture of the kingdom in your spirit I told my wife this week I said baby something happened this week that if God hadn't prepared us for a month ago we will have almost destroyed our family a month ago God spoke and said hey do this put this in place this is gonna happen and we moved, we acted, and when Satan struck, we laughed. Because he was a day late and a dollar short. And I said, baby, what if we had no Holy Spirit? What if we had no God? What if we were like wind or like breeze or like leaves being tossed about by every wind of doctrine? What if we didn't understand what it was to sit down in prayer and hear God talk? And I began to think, the people I meet on a daily basis, the witches that walk into my office every so once in a while, what if I didn't have eyes to see and to discern? What if, oh come on somebody, what, 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 what if I couldn't speak a word and it came to pass? What if I lost my gift of prophecy? What if I lost the anointing? of God upon my life what if I became like a normal human being that's what the Bible says when you've tasted of the powers of the world to come and you fall it's impossible to be restored because if you can trade if you can trade 10 minutes of sexual pleasure for a certain dimension of divinity then you never deserved it in the first place I'm not afraid of hell I respect hell but I'm not afraid of hell I don't leave holy because of hell I don't leave pure because of hell I don't forgive because of hell no 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 I'm petrified see I'm scared of God to the place where I think what if I lost my connection with him I've seen so much I've had so much I've walked in too much to let it go because your gossip no 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 I'm not going to sell my birthright for higher tithes and offering. No, 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 no. Come on, somebody. 
no, 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 no. I'm not going to swap authority in the spirit for a mega church. No, 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 no. You can have your mega church. I want to be able to oh, come on. They can know your name on TBN. I want them to know my name in hell. When I walk into cities, as has happened before, I want people to stop me on the road and say, who are you? When I go to a place to minister for three straight days, I want on my first day for it to continue to happen that a witch meets me in my dreams and says, why are you here? They know my name. That's all I care about. I'm not swapping the glory of God, the kingdom of heaven in its infant form. It hasn't yet come fully with me. It's still manifesting. And you want me to let it go for this foolishness and this rubbish? Mountain, get out of my way. Mountain, get out of my way. Why? Why do we pay six thousand pounds a month to run this place? For those of you who think people go into ministry to make money, God forgive you. Because we have a picture. Because God said, build me a place. First of all, this, this building is not for church. Because it will cost us four times less to hire a hotel building. It's so you can come here and pray 24-7. So that round the clock, you can walk into a place where there is prayer, where there is counseling, where there is, come on. And you just see, It is so that it can be a base in the city of Nottingham where people can be sent 24-7 to evangelize the city. And you want to sit down at home watching TV and, and, and Desperate Housewives and Arsenal v Man U and you're to come on, the, 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 the devil is a liar. You don't have the seed of the kingdom in you. There's no faith in your belly. There's no picture in your spirit. There's no vision in your soul. There's nothing that has taken a hold of you. You're not like Paul where he said, when I saw the heavenly vision, I was not disobedient. Like Stephen, you're eyes have never been opened to see the son of glory stand in glory uh, come on somebody you don't understand what god wants things to look like that's why you are conformed to this world that's why you have reduced faith to what you can wear what you can eat what you can live in when those are the very same things the Bible says not to be concerned about. No, 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 my brother, my sister. Faith goes beyond that. Faith is the template for the downloading of the fullness of heaven's reality in the earth. That's why Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The next things that follow are just the overflow. Give us this day. Lead us not into temptation. Forgive us our sins as a byproduct of the will of God. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I prophesied on Friday I want to repeat that word tonight to this today 31 days before a portal opens God said to me on Friday son the second quarter from April somewhere between April and August this year a day of creation is about to change there is a world that is coming to an end. A dispensation is ending and another one is beginning. Starting from April. The greater glory, the kingdom of heaven is returning to the earth in a measure we have never seen before. God said to me, give me a few words, said son, set watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem who will not give me sleep day or night. Isaiah 62. 
somewhere between Psalm 65 and 68 it says if or oh, the Lord gave the word great is the company of them that published it someone say intercession someone say evangelism then he went on to say to me a little one will become a thousand and a small one a mighty nation someone say increase then he asked me a question that broke my heart son in the day of my power will my people be willing because it is only those that are willing and obedient that get to eat the good of the land I repeat that word today God said if we will set watchmen on the walls that's why we want a 24 hour it's not so we can announce to the world that we are doing it that's why we want 24 hour evangelism not so we can boast about it on TBN and I didn't say it God did he said a small one will become a thousand and a little one a mighty nation there is increase of the exponential dimension coming to this house numerically with one small condition in the day of his power will his people be willing and that one I can't answer for you somebody say God make me willing talk to him say God make me willing Go on, open your mouth. Say, God, make me willing. Give me a picture of your kingdom. So intense in my soul that it becomes substance and evidence. Labre korodobo shatalabaha. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. say Lord I want to be part of your greater glory I'm not talking about church now I'm talking about God's move in this dispensation here as a ministry we have a part to play but this is bigger than our ministry this is a universal initiative of God's kingdom Will he find mustard seed faith in you? Will you say, not my will, but yours be done, Jesus? I surrender all to you. I lay aside my issues and my hang-ups and my situations. And I throw myself in you, Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let your essence, your nature, the concept of who you are, that's the spirit of the word, not just the letter. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Let the essence of the nature of Jesus become the lamp to my feet and the light to my path. I eschew carnality. I embrace divinity and spirituality. Kindarama Sandalabaha. Kindere de Bosha Talabas Catalian de Dabose. 
Father, even in this house, let the atmosphere of heaven's kingdom so intensify. Let there be an outbreak of glory. I said on Thursday, Friday, I'll say it again. For those of you who are worried about money, relax. <laughs> because when heaven's atmosphere becomes pregnant and exceeds and, and, and becomes, becomes, starts to bleed into the earth, even the streets of heaven are gold, the Bible says. Well, we don't know about the streets of heaven being gold, but we know about the streets of the new Jerusalem that came from heaven being gold. These aren't going to be days of gold dusts in revival meetings any longer. I said, going to be days of seeing gold bars. Relax. Bars. As you begin to let heaven permeate your spirit, when it begins to leak into your life, it will also leak with the wealth of heaven. I said this word on Friday, I'll repeat it. Someone here is going to buy a house and discover gold or oil beneath it. Business ideas that will change the destinies of your great, great, great grandchildren financially. Atmospheres are begin to thicken. Will begin to thicken where even in children's church meetings, wheelchair users will begin to be healed without words being said or hands being laid because they will be a people who have faith for the kingdom of God Father we give you thanks for your word to, to this morning this day confirm it confirm it in the name of Jesus confirm it in the precious name of Jesus Somebody put those hands together for God this morning. Come on, put those hands together for God this morning. Hallelujah.